Hi there smart monkeys and welcome to my channel. For those of you who have been here before, welcome back. This is my little platform where I turn struggling math students into math masters. I post videos Tuesdays and Thursdays, so please subscribe and turn on the notification button if you want to know when I post any new videos. In this video, I'm going to be looking at directions under the topic maps and scales. And this is a nice follow-up video to the previous video that I did on maps and scales where I teach you how to actually work with and do calculations with number scales and bar scales. So this is a nice follow-up. And um, the focus here is really on the question around directions. Okay, but I actually look at an entire exam type question where they cover a lot of the sections of maps and scales so that you can actually see how to in, how to actually use the methods that I taught you in the previous video as well as what I'm going to show you in this video. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Okay, so this is the second lesson to maps and scales and it is focusing on directions. I do want to advise you that you do this video with the maps and scales video lesson one together. I just think that it would give you a nice clear understanding of this topic overall and how what calculations you have to make sure that you can do in order to answer any question on these sections. Okay, so for this um, video, I am using one example, um, one map, but I am taking a little bits from different topics to show you how they are actually or how they can actually ask this section, combining various sections that you have covered in other topics in one question. Okay, although the focus is on directions. Okay, so I'm this is sort of, you can see this as a typical exam type question. So I'm going to guide you through it as if it was an exam question. Okay. So on the left hand side here, you'll see that there's a map that's given to you and the map has a key. And it has sort of all the information about this specific park in Joburg. And yeah, so we're just going to jump right in and start with the questions. Okay. So the first question says, what is the general direction from the main entrance to Uton. Now, when you get a question like this, grade 12, general direction means north, south, east, west. Okay? Don't give detailed directions like turn left here, first circle right, then turn left. That's not what they're asking. Whenever you see the word general, then that means they're asking you for compass directions. Okay? And on the map, you will see it should be given to you which direction north is. And most likely it will be north facing up. But there are times where I've seen where the north is sort of facing to the side. Whichever way north is facing, you are going to draw a little sort of compass like this. Remembering that east is always on the right of north and west is always on the left. I always tell my students, if you look at it, it must say we. Okay, then you know you sort of have the directions in the right places. Okay, so the question is asking the general direction from the main entrance. So over here we have the main entrance to Uton and over there we have Uton. Okay, so in order to get from here to there, we will go and you'll always go up and down, up or down first. So north or south first. Okay, so from the main entrance I need to go up. So already I know I'm moving in the north direction and then I have to go to the right, which means I'm going in the east direction. Okay, so your answer for this question then is north east. Okay, so you have to travel in a northeasterly direction to go from the left hand, to go from the main entrance to Uton. Okay, so remember the important thing here is general direction. You just give the compass direction. Now, the second one is a little bit more detailed direction. So it says, Mark wants to walk from the greenhouses to the kudu corner. Provide him with instructions on how to get there. Okay, so what's important here, Great Wilds, is notice that they now want you to provide clear instructions. So this is where you're going to actually give direction. And the tip that I can give you here is, one, you always start your first sentence from where the person actually needs to leave. 
So they are coming from, they are walking from greenhouses. So your first instruction must always mention greenhouses. Then your last instruction must always say where your destination is, right? And everything in between that must literally give guidance that eliminates any possibility of this person actually not getting there. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Okay, so let's first just make sure we know where everything is. So this is where the greenhouses are and this is where Kudu Corner is. So they want you to give directions right from here to there. So I generally first look at what is the easiest and simplest way. So if I look at this now, do you see this path that I'm doing that I'm following with a mouse here would be the easiest way to get there. But now I have to provide direction to make sure that at no way along the way does the person take the wrong turn because my instructions is clear. So I always start, the first direction would be where I'm leaving from. Right, so I say leave the greenhouses and head towards the owl forest. So take note here, there's various ways this person can go along this route, this person can go along that route. So if I say head straight towards the um towards the owl forest, then that means that it's clear that this is the only path that, that person can take. So it eliminates all other incorrect possibilities. Then it says head towards the owl forest, right, with the greenhouses on your right. So this way you are leaving this way and the greenhouses on your right. And the reason why this is mentioned is because if you leave here, the greenhouses would be on your left. So this makes it very clear to the person where they're leaving to and in which direction they're going, right? So this says, leave the greenhouses and head towards the owl forest with the greenhouses on your right. Okay, so that's this road over here. Now you're going to say, let, now you're going to have a look at what would be the next turn off from this road. Okay, so you're going to let this person then now know that they're on the right road. Now, if I look, there's a left turn over there, there's a right turn over there, and then there's a left turn where we actually want to go. So essentially, if I look at this now, I will see that I this person has to take the second left turn. Now, remember, you always traveling and looking at this from as if you were the person that's traveling, okay? So this would be the second left turn. And please note, grade 12s, don't give directions like turn north, turn east turn west you have to give turn left and right because if you're going to give someone directions in real life you're not going to mention to someone turn north they don't want to know which way is north or east or west okay so you're going to say turn left or turn right so in this case now this person needs to take the second left so it says turn left at the second road on your left so you're going to go this person knows that they must go left but where by the second road left Okay, then if you look at this small piece of road, you'll see that it splits, right? So now you actually have to mention that and say, where the road splits, take the right turn, right? So then you will continue straight and then continue. You'll see here the road splits, they turn to the right and then there's a T-junction and here they will then turn to the first, this is the first left, okay? And there you will say the kudu corner will be on your left. Okay, so take note. I told them where I'm leaving. I told them where the de destination will be when I actually get there. And I gave them instructions along the way that eliminates all other possibilities. And then lastly, I used turn left, turn right, as opposed to turn east or turn west. Okay, so that's how you give detailed directions. So take note of the difference between general directions and detailed directions. Now let's look at where they would so include other types of questions in math section. Okay, so the next question says it took Mark 56 minutes to walk from the greenhouses to the Kudu corner. The total distance walked was 6 kilometers. Calculate his average walking speed in kilometers per hour. So already your brain goes, oh, this is a distance, speed, and time question. Okay, so what are they asking? They're asking for the average speed. So that means it's distance divided by time. But now remember the speed they want in kilometers per hour. So distance must be in kilometer. 
and time must be in hours. Already I see that they've given this 56 in minutes. So this is how you would answer the question. You will say, okay, average speed is equal to distance divided by time. And my distance is 6 kilometers and my time is 56 minutes. This is based on the information given in the question. Then I have to convert the denominator by dividing it by 60 so that I actually have the answer in hours. Right? So then I will end up having 6 kilometers divided by 0 0.93333. Again, I'm not rounding off any answers because it's not my final answer. And then that means that my answer now is in 6.43 kilometers per hour. So what that means is that he walked approximately 6.46 kilometers per hour. Okay, so you see how they can bring in distance, speed and time now, which is really falling under measurement into a map question but you're applying the same methods that I taught in that video. Okay, then number four, the direct distance between Kuru Corner and Mountain of Silver Oaks is eight kilometers. Determine the scale of the map. Okay, so this is why I said you must watch the previous video with this specific video, because in that video, I show you exactly how to do this. But let me break it down for you. So here they're giving you, they want to know what is the scale of a map. So in order to know a map scale, you have to know what is the map measurement and then what is the real life measurement and the relationship between the two will tell you the scale. So in this case, the real life measurement is given, which is eight kilometers, but we need to measure the maps measurement, okay, between Kuru Corner and Mountain, and Mountain of Silver Oaks. So let's first see where these two places are. So here you'll see that's Kuru Corner and here's the Silver Oaks. And the actual distance between this then is 10 centimeters. Right, so now I have the actual, uh, not the actual, sorry, the distance on the map that I've measured. Then the actual distance in real life is 8 kilometers. So how do I write this in ratio form? I always put the maps on the left and the real life on the right. Then once I have this, the rest is fairly easy. I first convert both to the same unit. So the right hand signs 8, I'm going to convert to from kilometers to centimeters. So that means I'm moving in this direction. I'm multiplying. So I have to multiply by 1000 and multiply by 100. So that's how I do it there. This whole section is taught in my conversions video. And then you will end up having 10 centimeters is to 800,000 centimeters. Okay. So already now I have both sides in the same units. Now to find the scale, I will say divide both sides by 10 so that the left hand side is then a 1. And so the scale then for this map is 1 is to 80,000. Right, so this is a typical maps type exam question. Okay, and I hope sort of the, the, the types of questions that I've, I've given you and the way we've worked through the answers, I hope that this video has really helped you. Okay. All right, so there's that video. Um, I hope it sort of helped you understand how to answer these types of questions a bit better. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or any comments or any recommendations for future videos, please add it in the comment section below. Um, yeah, then I will see you in the next video. Thanks guys for watching. Bye.